The second key trait, which is again universal among these folks, is a very, very high degree of mobility and adaptability. They are, none of them are ever contended with status quo. They're willing to go wherever the opportunity was. Each one of those people, including myself, we have lived in I don't know how many countries, how many cities, done different kind of jobs, lived with different organizations, different cultures, and been comfortable. Uh, we were willing always to uproot our families and move them along with us as we went. Kids changed schools, wives gave up, uh, gave up careers, wives lived in alien environments, uh, but all happily because we were, we were looking for something big in the future, willing to compromise the today for a much better tomorrow, a common trait right across uh, the team there. One point that people miss very often is that while we grew, grew up at home, we were always at ease with diversity. But when you live in a country like India, you're living in the thick of diversity, whether you take the diversity of thought, experience, culture, languages, food, dress. You could be sitting in a room where there were kids speaking in three, four languages. You didn't understand everything that was being said, but you weren't uncomfortable with any of it. There was no problem. So diversity was a norm. Different kind of uh, music, fo food, etc., was a norm. It was, nobody was uncomfortable with it. A great strength going forward. The other key trait is that all these folks grew up and are very, very comfortable with the idea of scale. Scale is not frightening for any of them. If you look at the physical side of India, you look at the population, the number of consumers, customers you have to handle, the number of distribution points, employees, it's always large. When there's a gathering uh, of people uh, for any kind of a rally, people, uh, people are talking numbers running into hundreds or thousands. It's not 5,000 people that get together in a place. It's lakhs of people. It's crores of people moving around. Uh, and businesses, a lot of businesses, are built on hundreds or indeed thousands of very small transactions. Invoice sizes, individual invoice sizes in many businesses are small, but the aggregate can be large. So the concept of scale and rising above that scale was not an area of discomfort. Uh, of course, we all know all these people are highly competitive and very, very hardworking. Uh, there's always been extremely stiff competition for getting into a decent school, getting into a decent college, uh, into a post-grad institutions, getting a job, uh, and, and the competition has been intense at every step. Uh, working long hours was not a big deal. Every uh, Indian leader that I know has got weeks of what they call pending leave. Uh, they never manage to use up their leave. Uh, half the leave lapses. Uh, it's not that you can cash the leave and take the money home. It's just that you don't take the leave. Uh, you work weekends quite happily. And that actually results in a competitive edge. Uh, there is, however, there are a couple of negative sides of this competitive streak uh, amongst us. And there, there is a huge amount of peer group awareness, peer group competition. You heard the question very often, so what batch are you? There are 58, 59 year old guys, my batch mates, who still go around saying, I was one year senior to Yoon's college. Senior to what? I mean, you're 59, I'm 58. Yes, you passed out of uh, uh, school one year before me. But this whole stacking up against peers almost becomes a fault. And this leads to sometimes we folks being a little excessively self-promoting. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a sin that uh, destroys us, but I think awareness of this uh, is helpful. Uh, very highly results oriented. Sometimes as a result of that, uh, we uh, or, or, or some of the folks uh, can lose uh, the visionary angle, uh, but then I think they motor back to it. The other subject that I wanted to touch on briefly is that the, the social network in India is a real thing. I've seen people from the US, from Europe, being absolutely stunned about the fact that there's 1.2 billion people floating around in India, yet everyone seems to know everyone else. So how does that work? We have grown up in a society that was strongly interdependent. Friends, family, neighbors were all intrusive. They were all into you. You couldn't get away from anyone. But the good side of that was you could go to anyone with a challenge, with an issue. 
So we have grown up with that. So the network is a social network. It's not a professional network. It's not LinkedIn. It started well before Facebook. It was there always. And it is truly speaking a safety net. It is, can I call 10 guys when I'm feeling bad about something or I need advice about something? Yes, I can. No matter where they are, what time of day they are, and it is, and what board meeting they're in, it's not a problem. It's a wonderful thing to have. It is driven by social power, not by careers. Uh, we enjoy being in touch. We enjoy calling people home. Uh, we enjoy doing this at least seven times a week, if not nine. Uh, and this happens on a regular basis. We are willing to give each other fair breaks. However, we don't normally go out of the way to bend rules for each other. And that's not a bad thing necessarily. Today, things are, in my view, slightly different back home. Uh, there are many more opportunities at home and growing. Uh, local companies are going global. They're becoming big. Global companies operating back home in India, for example, are now huge. They're talking about billions of dollars uh, of sales. So they're no longer the 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollar companies that they used to be in the old days. Success by the young Indian today is taken more for granted. They haven't seen a bad patch. There hasn't been a four or five year run, uh, which was lousy uh, back home. It's always been a growth story. Uh, so with this economic booms comes a certain arrogance and a little loss of humility. And I think uh, this is a watch out uh, area. Uh, so the two thoughts that came up quite often in the discussions I had with my, with my friends, one was that if you were looking at a single driving factor of what got us going in our initial stages of life, it was the solid primary education that we received, which led on almost normally onto the secondary education and tertiary education after that. So if we could really build a phenomenal primary education network back home in our, in our countries, we would be producing global leaders at a rate that would be absolutely amazing. But we believe that to temper that, we need to expose the youngsters to cross-cultural realities early in the game so that they don't grow up looking inwards, as is a likelihood when you're living in a very successful society of your own uh, with, with, a, uh, with, a, with a theme, with a, with a metaphor, uh, which is your uh, metaphor. Uh, that, becomes, uh, that could become uh, tricky. So exposing them, uh, taking them out of their, uh, of their own well and exposing them early in the game uh, to the larger world, I think uh, would be a powerful uh, thing to do. So if these two things came together, we could be, produce, we could be producing a large, a very large part of global leaders in corporations worldwide tomorrow. That's the thought I'd like to leave you with. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Pradeep. Uh, thank you for putting me out of this uh, range because of my age. <laughs> uh, there's only one person in the eight people uh, who is present here, but uh, I'll spare him the embarrassment of asking in a public forum whether he agrees with Pradeep or not. So, Piyush, you, you can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, it's good to know the DNA that goes into this new diaspora which has been so successful worldwide it was not too long ago in the early 50s and early 60s that the only people that the multinationals hired, including FMCGs, were from either Sri Lanka or Philippines. And uh, Indians and other subcontinent people or Singapore, Malaysia were not even uh, uh, considered. Of course, it's changed completely and uh, the people you named yourself, Piyush, others, uh, the best examples of the new DNA that has made this diaspora succeed beyond, as you say, beyond their own wildest expectations. Uh, it, is a, it must be a good feeling, and uh, the, the success is, of course, visible 